This program is sponsored in part by Municipal Credit Union, serving the financial needs of our members since 1916. MCU, strong, trusted, growing. Transit Check saves money for commuters, lowers payroll taxes for businesses, and it's also good for the environment. With Transit Check, everyone benefits. The Transit Managerial Benevolent Association, protecting the rights of non-represented, active, and retired managerial employees within the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Mike Landy, President. Con Edison, on it. Working for you 24-7, we're delivering reliable service, energizing your life, empowering your business. We're people helping people every day. Transport Workers Union Local 100, representing the 35,000 men and women who move New York. We're New York's public transit union. John Samuelson, President. And by the Patrolman's Benevolent Association of the City of New York, fighting for the rights of the police officers who protect New York City. Patrick J. Lynch, President. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Transit Transit News Magazine. This year, we're starting our 19th year on the air, and what a great ride it's been. I'm Mark Gross. Transit Transit News has a long-running history, so what better place to start our new season than here at the New York Transit Museum in downtown Brooklyn? I'm Lena Lansky. And Lena, did you know that the Transit Museum has over 7,000 artifacts and is open all year round so you can take a ride back in time? Last year, the museum had over 135,000 visitors checking out its exhibits. But before we go on tour on this month's show... Why am I here? For a history lesson. I'm Dick Wallen, and I've got that story. There's no red carpet, but this award ceremony still has stars. I'm Lindsay Dawson, and I've got that story. For cleaner air, the MTA has added hundreds of hybrid electric cars to its fleet and some eco-friendly buses as well. The MTA continues searching for clean fuel transportation vehicles. Here's Joe Khaleesi with a new electric bus that New York City Transit's been testing. Since the invention of the motor bus in 1905, there have been many innovations. Buses have evolved into more practical and efficient vehicles. From the 1959 fishbowl to the high-capacity articulated buses of the early 1990s, New York City Transit is testing the promise of a true zero-emission vehicle, a bus so efficient it doesn't need any fuel. Being that the bus is electric, it's driven off of batteries, and the batteries power an electric motor. So there's no conventional engine and there's no transmission. The Transit Authority spends, uh, purchases 50 million gallons of diesel fuel a year. So if we have electric buses, we wouldn't be using any diesel. That results in zero emissions and it would uh, lower our life cycle cost. The bus doesn't have an engine, so it doesn't have a diesel particulate filter. That's another cost that I would save. And the uh, batteries are estimated to last the life of the bus 12 years. We currently have to change them every six years. That's another savings. In addition to being environmentally friendly, having no combustible engine parts cuts down on maintenance, saving time and money. Because we uh, bring our buses in and inspect them, because the first thing that's due is an oil change. So on an average bus of uh, 25,000 miles a year, we do eight oil changes a year. This bus would have zero. That would, means I could extend the inspection interval to four inspections a year. That would cut the uh, inspection cost in half the secret to this green technology is something you will find in many households, only these are much bigger. The batteries on this bus is three packs. There's a pack over each wheel well in the front of the bus, and there's another pack in a tray that slides underneath the back of the bus. They're lithium-ion phosphate batteries. And because of the uh, life expectancy of 12 years, they're more uh, environmentally friendly because you um, can get a longer life out of them where you'd have to change them on the other lithium-ion batteries we currently have in our fleet. 
Before this bus can become part of the New York City Transit fleet, it must go through a rigorous audition. This is a 60-day test where the manufacturer agrees to give us the bus on loan for 60 days. So we put it in revenue service, so it's treated like any other bus in the fleet. And we want to see how it behaves, what the customer feedback is, how the operators like it, how the maintenance people rate the bus, if it has any breakdowns, is there any items on the bus that you know we would like to Im uh, include in our future orders, or is there items on the bus that we definitely would not um, like to have on any other buses. Each generation of buses gets more and more efficient. Now we're down to zero emissions. Reporting for Transit Transit News, I'm Joe Calisi. Hello everyone, I'm Michael Hall, and welcome to the News Desk. On Sunday, December 1st, a Metro North Hudson Line train derailed in the Bronx, killing four customers and injuring 71. The accident occurred at the Spite and Dival curb, causing all cars to leave the track. This was the first time in Metro North's history that an accident resulted in customer fatalities. First responders were on the scene within minutes, aiding injured customers, and crews worked 24-7 to upright and remove the cars and start evaluations of the situation. The National Transportation Safety Board is the lead investigative body and will issue the final determination. The MTA has already begun implementing safety upgrades, including an automatic braking system near the accident site. In order to move passengers, New York City Transit deployed buses to and from the affected station. Here's Michael Rabinowitz with the trek from Yonkers to the Bronx. The Hudson Line derailment affected many passengers. Metro North Railroad provided free bus service from Yonkers to 242nd Street in the Bronx while repair work continued. MTA employees worked around the clock to keep the customers safe and moving through the shuttle route. There's been a lot of sympathy because of what has happened and they understand that we're out here to get them to their place of destination as safe as possible. Moving thousands of people is no easy task during the best of times and when there is a service outage change it could be even more of a challenge. Everybody's really helpful about where to go and how to get on and conductors here are so friendly so just knowing that they're safe and stuff is um, a relief. From the bus drop at 242nd Street Passengers were able to transfer to the number one subway line to finish their commute to Manhattan. This is what MTA and MAPSTOA does. This is our job. We are supposed to do this, especially in this time. And we're supposed to do this in the time of need that everyone needs us. So we're here to service our customers the best way as possible. Metro North Railroad is quickly getting customers back on track. I'm Michael Rabinowitz with Transit Transit News. Once commuters disembarked from the bus, they were able to connect with the subway. Here's Mark Gross with that side of the story. For the second time in less than a year, New York City Transit has had to use a bus bridge to bridge a gap in railroad service. When disaster strikes and service on the railroads or subway is severely interrupted, the bus bridge is put into place to provide nonstop shuttle service between affected stations. After the Hudson Line derailment, the bus bridge was set in motion quickly and efficiently. Our planning started moments after we learned of the incident on Sunday morning. So uh, we, we had a conference call with our senior staff and uh, general managers from the various divisions and buses to uh, start planning our bus operation. We had buses in place uh, Sunday afternoon around 1.30. We bused from Tarrytown Station, Metro North, to uh, the White Plains Metro North Station. During the week, 130 buses were used to move over 7,000 customers daily. And with a little help, the commute went smoothly. We're working closely with the uh, MTA Police Department as well as NYPD. They provided uh, excellent support for traffic control as well as uh, Yonkers Police Department. And we've uh, had great support and it's, uh, it's worked very well. And despite the obvious inconvenience, customers were grateful to have a reliable way to get to where they were going. I'm happy. It's better than not going at all. It's, it's good so far. You know, I'm glad the train is here when I'm getting off the train. I'm glad the bus is here, so that's good. The Metro North Railroad was created so commuters wouldn't have to take buses. But when the railroad isn't running, commuters are awfully glad there are buses to take. I'm Mark Gross reporting for Transit, Transit News. Once the train cars and debris was removed from the tracks, Metro North employees were able to do repairs. Here is Mark Gross again with that story. After 30 years without a customer fatality, 
The event on December 1st, 2013 posed an unprecedented challenge to the maintenance crews that maintain the signals and tracks of the Metro North Railroad. Normally, we don't have trains laying all over the place, and the fact that four individuals passed, it was a whole different mindset here. I can't speak for everybody, but I know it was different for me walking into it. I have never experienced anything like this before, nor do I ever want it again. Soon after the first responders arrived at the early morning derailment, Metro North Railroad responded with its own team. Well, I arrived about an hour and 20 minutes after it happened, and there was, as you can imagine, was chaos going on. There was several emergency people here, well, hundreds of emergency people here between police, fire, EMS. Um, railroad people started showing up on the scene, and um, it was the worst I've ever seen. It was quite chaotic at that point. Organized chaos, I should say. Once the team from Metro North was on the scene, they began an assessment of the damage. There was several ties broken on track two, uh, approximately 400, 450 feet, totally destroyed on track four, 1,500 feet at third rail down on track four, about 500 feet down on track two. Although the damage was extensive, a team of workers from all over the MTA and the private sector immediately began the cleanup to get service back up and running as quickly as possible. We brought in uh, outside company, uh, I believe it was Crane Masters, that did the re-railing re work. And uh, the rest of it was done by our in-house people, track structures, uh, CNS and power. We had to pool all our resources and we had help from the TA with some of their equipment. Uh, we brought in lights. We worked around the clock once it was turned over to us from the NTSB, and, and we were able to get track one back in service, I believe, by Tuesday, and track two by Wednesday afternoon. And then we had the bulk of the work remaining on track four. I believe everything was back in service Saturday evening, Sunday morning. Uh, we worked through the weekend to get track four restored. Now that service is back in operation, there are upgrades to the signal system designed to provide an additional layer of safety. The signal department did an, uh, a change in our signal codes coming in here so that there's a, a speed reduction coming into the curve via the signal system. Since the cleanup, Metro North Railroad has put features in place to make sure their safety record doesn't get derailed again. I'm Mark Gross reporting from Spite and Dival. Back to you in the studio. Metro North Railroad is back on track, and our hearts go out to the families who lost loved ones. I'm Michael Hall. Now back to the show. Hello, I'm Sarah Mossbacker, and I'm here with Eli Rump of the New York Transit Museum. So Eli, tell me about the Transit Museum. Sure. The Transit Museum is located in a decommissioned subway station in downtown Brooklyn, and we focus on the history of public transit in the region. We got a lot of great stuff coming up. On January 29th, we have our second ever trivia night, which will be a chance for uh, transit buffs and New York City enthusiasts to show off their knowledge. On February 5th, we have our Problem Solvers Discussion Series with Ben Kabak. And on February 14th, we have one of our most fun events of the year, our annual Misconnections Valentine's Day Party. What do you have for children? Uh, as always, we have uh, weekend workshops on Saturdays and Sundays at 1.30 p.m. Uh, that are free with admission and are always a lot of fun. On January 26th, we have our special day for special kids, which is a day for free admission and all kinds of different fun activities for special needs families. And we have a after school program uh, for special needs families called Subway Sleuths. Do you have any special exhibits coming up? Anatomy of a Powerhouse Electrifying the L that will look at about 30 archival photographs of the 74th Street Powerhouse. We also have an exhibit in late January called Transit on the Spectrum that will feature artwork by artists on the, with special needs. And as always, you can check out our holiday train show in Grand Central through late February. Why should people visit the museum? It's got something for everybody. Kids always like trains, and there are a lot of interactive exhibits for them. And it's also a great place to take parents or grandparents who might recognize some of the vintage trains. Um, and it's one of the most affordable museums in the city, so it's easy to take a quick trip. The New York Transit Museum has historical timelines that you can follow to see the development of mass transit in the New York area, from bridges to subway cars. 
And with a subway system that's over 100 years old, there's plenty of history and architecture you can explore. Here's Dave Wallen with a landmark tour you can enjoy. If you have a sense of adventure and you want to see a part of New York that most people never get to see, then the Look at a Landmark tour is for you. Uh, so we've done a number of stations in Brooklyn. Uh, Avenue H on the Brighton Line was one. Uh, we did a Squire Vickers tour in Brooklyn. Today we're here at uh, Bleecker Street Station. We've also uh, done, led a tour at Columbus, uh, Columbus Circle Station as well. Um, there are more than 70 stations in the system or landmark. So as we've been um, rehabilitating them, we've been uh, fixing them. Once the uh, work is complete, that's when we then schedule the tour. New York City Transit, in conjunction with the New York Transit Museum, has put together a tour of newly rehabilitated landmark subway stations. Transit Chief Architect Judith Kunoff and the Education Department of the Transit Museum started doing these tours two years ago to highlight the unique historic qualities of the subway stations. We very much talk about um, what we refer to as the original historic architectural fabric of the station. The highlights range from glass tile and colored mosaics to the recently renovated Avenue H station. The Look at a Landmark tour helps bring subway history to life. Uh, Avenue H that I mentioned, the one in Brooklyn, uh, the, what makes that one so special, it's the only wooden uh, station house in the system. So it really depends on, on the station. You don't have to be a member of the New York Transit Museum to go on these tours. They are currently open to anyone who wants to learn a little bit about what makes the transit system in New York so unique. Generally speaking, the tours have been given on the weekends. Uh, Sunday afternoon typically seems to be a good, good time slot for people to join us. Look at a Landmark Tour is a fantastic opportunity for anyone to take a true look into New York City Transit's past. We are in the process of putting together podcasts for those who missed the tours uh, so that they can download the podcast from the website and then take the tour, if you will, by themselves. Um, and I guess we're really looking for feedback, those of you who do take the tour. Um, we're looking for your feedback so we can um, make the tours better. So next time you're in the subway, don't just go through the station, come to the station to learn about its rich history. I'm Dave Wallen, reporting for Transit Transit News. Oh, shoot. You know, Lena, it takes thousands of people behind the scenes to move millions of commuters every day. And no matter what the weather or the road conditions, many of these transit professionals go unnoticed. But once a year, a number of New York City Transit employees do get their well-deserved recognition. Here's Lindsay Gossin with the Medals of Excellence. As we celebrate the holidays, New York City Transit held its own celebration. It's the annual ceremony to honor some exemplary employees. They were awarded medals of excellence from three categories, heroism, commendation, and distinguished service. Medals of excellence is one of New York City Transit's signature employee recognition programs. Through this program, we celebrate employees for their extraordinary dedication to our customers, to their colleagues, and to our organization. Medals of excellence are transit's highest honor. Today we are honoring 32, of which 31 are here with us today. These are for transit employees, buses, subways, capital program management, and the administrative departments. 
The candidates are nominated by their managers and approved by their divisions and departments. And then there's an agency-wide committee that reviews the nominations and selects the medalist. MTA and union officials were on hand to express their gratitude to the award recipients. I can assure you that all of our recipients today will simply say their heroics and courage were no big deal, that they were just doing their job. Thank God for people like those here today. Whether it was somebody that fell off of a platform, whether someone that was a, a victim of a crime, you went out there and you took, you took care of, you, you just helped a fellow human being, uh, even though you may have been putting yourself at risk. And, and to all of you, I commend you uh, for, for those fine acts. After they were presented with their awards, these local heroes shared their stories of going above and beyond the call of duty. I got off the train there. Got off I here. walked down there and I heard screams. So I ran down here, the passengers started running towards me. They said a woman is being robbed. What'd you do? I crossed the street and I followed him on the opposite side of the street. And he started transforming. He takes off his jacket. He had a windbreaker jacket, a baseball really? cap, and he gets. Well, let's go up. And all of a sudden, the van pulls up. And I said, oh, the cops. When I looked up, the officer was leaning out the window. He said, you all right? I said, no. The guy right there just robbed the lady down at the train station. He said, where? I said, right there. He's walking down, blue suit. And then they go, and they go up, and they go up on the sidewalk, and they jump out, and they get him. And I'm at the corner right here, and I said, thank God. Yeah. They got him. I just want to believe that Steve would come in the train station to see me. He flew me to Chicago. My husband and I, you know, had us in the Hyatt just treating me like I was the queen for the day. <laughs> so why did you receive this award today? What did you receive this award for? Actually, during Hurricane Sandy, a couple of guys was trapped at Stillwell facility. So they gave us a call, and myself and Mike Watt went down and picked them up out of the uh, facility. When we got there, there was a young lady and her family stuck in the water as well. One of my other co-workers, Stephen Miller, he got out the truck, went and rescued all those guys and pulled them in the truck. I mean, if you guys making me a hero, I'm just a father. A father, I just act as a father though. Um, a kid was getting beat up, kicked and punched in my bus and I just had to rescue him. I just helped him out. A very special Distinguished Service Award was given to Thomas Merrick, who served the public as a New York City transit employee for 65 years. I'm sorry to leave because I know there's a lot of changes that are in the uh, pipeline that uh, I'd like to see completed. New York City Transit and the MTA strive for excellence, and these award winners prove that the agency is on the right track. I'm Lindsay Gossin, reporting for Transit Transit News. Thanks to the MTA Arts for Transit program, the next time you use mass transit, look up once in a while and you'll see some amazing artwork throughout the system. And the artwork's not just for subway riders, it's also in railroad stations and on platforms. And if you go to the Grand Central Terminal Food Court, you can see the On Paper exhibit. Here's Rhea Titus with that story. Arts for Transit has been working on the Grand Central Terminal Centennial for the past year and their newest exhibition, titled On Paper, Grand Central at 100, is their latest and most fascinating exhibition yet. Right now we're standing in the dining concourse at Grand Central Terminal, a place that we usually use for photography exhibitions, and this time we decided to showcase original artwork by four different artists who do paper cut work, and the original artwork is on display. We think it's a really wonderful way to celebrate Grand Central and to showcase a different kind of work in this space that's used by over 700,000 people every day. The paper cuts artists were inspired by photos and utilized the light boxes to show how the light has been shining through Grand Central Terminal over the past 100 years. For this project we had to work on light boxes and so I had to flip the process a bit and instead of using light coming from the front, I'm using light coming from the back. I begin with a drawing on the reverse side of the paper so that all my lines will be, will be masked in the end. It'll be flipped and you'll only see the clean side of the paper. So with the black paper I worked with a ceramic um, pencil so that I could see the lines to cut. 
and then with the white layer I just use a, a pen on the, on the reverse side again and I do all the cutting so I'm basically following a map that I've drawn so everything has to remain connected in some way in the end it flips over and you see this what's like magic where the image is just there and it appears. I take uh, a lot of time doing a research in the New York Library and uh, um, Transact Museum and you know looking for a black and white photos to see the Grand Central history behind it. Commuters and visitors to the terminal were thrilled to see these unique pieces, an ancient craft transformed into modern artwork that represents Grand Central Terminal. I think it's wonderful. I think it's great. It's just um, anything that brings beauty to New Yorkers is a great thing. The on paper exhibit will be displayed for one year, illuminating the experience for commuters. I'm Rhea Titus reporting for Transit Transit News. The New York Transit Museum is the best place to bring friends and family on these cold winter days. And who knows, you just might learn something about the city and the huge role mass transit played in its development. Yes, Mark, it is true. In the short period of time that we've been here, I learned so much and I have to make another trip back. And Lena, you can because the Transit Museum is open all year round and it's accessible by mass transit. And on another note, this is our 19th year on the air. The time has flown by way too quickly. I can't wait until next year. And that'll be our 20th year. Yay! Well, on that note, that just about wraps up this month's show. If you have any questions, comments, or story ideas, please email us at transittransitnews at nyct.com. I'm Lena Lansky. Thanks for watching. And I'm Mark Gross. Thanks for writing. Happy, Happy New, New Year. Year! Come on, let's explore some of these trends. This program is sponsored in part by Municipal Credit Union, serving the financial needs of our members since 1916. MCU, strong, trusted, growing. Transit Check, saves money for commuters, lowers payroll taxes for businesses, and it's also good for the environment. With Transit Check, everyone benefits. Transit Managerial Benevolent Association, protecting the rights of non-represented, active, and retired managerial employees within the Metropolitan Transportation Authority. Mike Landy, President. Con Edison, on it. Working for you 24-7, we're delivering reliable service, energizing your life, empowering your business. We're people helping people every day. Transport Workers Union Local 100, representing the 35,000 men and women who move New York. We're New York's public transit union. John Samuelson, President. And by the Patrolman's Benevolent Association of the City of New York, fighting for the rights of the police officers who protect New York City. Patrick J. Lynch, President.